in this talk, uh, I am going to cover uh, the introduction of uh, the stationary process and the few definitions and the properties of the stationary process. Then there is a two important stationary processes. One is the Stickson stationary process, the second one is the Whiteson stationary process. After this, I am going to ex give few uh, simple examples uh, of a st stationary process. Introduction. A stationary process uh, is a stochastic process whose uh, probabilistic uh, laws remain unchanged through shift in times or in space. Stationarity is a key concept in the time series analysis as it allows powerful techniques for modeling and forecasting to be developed. What is the meaning of time series? Time series is a set of data ordered in time usually recorded at regular interval of regular in time interval. In probability theory, a time series, if you make out the a time series is a collection of random variable indexed by time. Time series is a special case of stochastic processes. One of the main features of time series is the interdependency of observation over time. This interdependency needs to be accounted in the time series data modeling to improve temporal behavior and forecast of future movement. So, basically the stationary is a is used as a tool in time series analysis when the raw data are often transformed to become stationary. That means, uh, if you collect the raw data and that raw data need not be satisfying the times, it need not satisfy the stationary property. But using the stationarity property, the time series of that raw data is transformed so that you can model as well as you can forecast for the future movement by using the stationarity property. There are different forms of stationarity depending on which of the stationary statistical properties of the time series are restricted. The most widely used form of stationarity are uh, Stickson stationarity and Weakson stationarity. So, basically before we go to the two types of uh, two important types of uh, stationary property that is a Weakson stationary property and Stickson stationary property, we will just see few definitions followed by these two important stationarity property. The first one is uh, the mean function. Mean function is defined as the with the notation m of t that is nothing but expectation of the random variable x of t. So, here the stochastic process is the collection of a random variable x of t over the t belonging to capital T and you are defining the mean function as the function of t that is expectation of a random variable x of t. Sometimes this is going to be a function of t, sometimes it is going to be a independent of t. According to the function of a t or independent of t, we can classify the stochastic process later. So, this definition is going to be very important that is mean function. The second one, it is a second order stochastic process. When we say a yes, stochastic process is going to be a second order stochastic process, if it satisfies the condition the second order moment it is going to be finite for all t. If this condition is satisfied, 
that means uh, if a random variables with the finite second order moment then that corresponding stochastic process is called a second order stochastic process that means there is a possibility the stochastic process may not satisfy the second order moment may be infinite or it won't exist in that case it is not going to be call it as a second order process so whenever you you collect the uh, random variables from a stochastic process and satisfying the second order moments are going to be finite for all t then we see that stochastic process is going to be a second order process the third definition is a covariance function how to define the covariance function covariance function in notation it is a c of s comma t that is nothing but covariance of two random variables x s comma x t since it is a collection of random variable so for each t you will have one random variable so that means you have here you have taken two s and t and you got the corresponding random variable and you are finding the covariance of these two random variables that is nothing but the expectation of x of s x of t minus expectation of x of s and the expectation of x of t obviously since you are finding the covariance of any two random variable obviously this stochastic process must be a second order stochastic process so that the second order moments exist and you are able to find out the covariance of this one that means uh, the existence of the second order moments is going to be finite that is assume it to be that is assumed and therefore you are getting the covariance of these two random variables so using that you are defining c of s comma t that is a covariance since it is nothing uh, it is expectation of the product minus expectation of the individual one it is going to satisfy satisfies the first condition the c of uh, s comma t is same as c of t comma s for all t comma s belonging to capital T where capital T is the parameter space from the parameter space if you take any two t and s then if you find out the covariance function of s comma t is same as a t comma s. the second uh, prop property using Schwartz inequality you can al always able to say the upper bound is going to be c of s comma s and c of t comma t this is going to be exist because the second order moments are uh, finite therefore c of s comma s that is nothing but uh, uh, that is nothing but the variance of uh, x of s uh, and this is going to be the variance of uh, x of t and therefore this is nothing but the product of the variance and the square root so this is going to be a finite quantity therefore this has the upper bound of uh, c of s comma t has the upper bound the square root of product of variance of x of s and x of t. The third property it is uh, the covariance matrix non negative definite also. That means for A1, A2, An, that is a set of all, as a set of real numbers,
and if you take uh, T i is belonging to capital T and if you find this double summation of uh, j running from 1 to n and k running from 1 to n a j and a k these are all the real numbers with the covariance functions of uh, t j comma t k the double summation is nothing but the expectation of summation of a j s x of a t j s whole square. This expectation quantity is always going to be greater than or equal to 0, since it is a whole square. So, the expectation of whole square quantity is always greater than or equal to 0 for all the set of all real numbers a 1, a 2, a n and the t a s are belonging to e and this is nothing but the expectation of this quantity and that quantity is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. So, you can conclude the covariance of function is going to be a non negative definite. The fourth property the sum as well as the product of any two covariance functions also covariance functions. The sum and the products also going to be the covariance function. This property needs elaboration, however, we assume these for this course. So, this four property is going to be used later whenever you would like to cross check whether the covariance function is going to be satisfied or how to find out the covariance function. So, these properties will be used.